It's not like all wrestling promotions haven't had bad ideas, because they most certainly have. It's just the nature of the beast. For every money-making concept, there's a bunch of others that suck. The latter usually fades away though, leaving space for lots of happiness and success. Unfortunately, where WCW is concerned, it was these ridiculous flights of fancies that may have killed them for good. Like no DQ matches that ended in a DQ, or having Judy flipping Bagwell on a pole. Some of the gimmicks they introduce over their lifespan too beg belief, and while there wasn't one specific idea that went too far, I bet none of these helped at all. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is 10 awful WCW gimmicks that immediately died. Number 10, Mark Jindrak. Mark Jindrak's major claim to wrestling fame was that he was almost in WWE's Evolution stable. Obviously that never happened, but it was close, and the reason for that is because he had potential. Many people thought he could go all the way. That was never realized, however, and you've got to assume WCW contributed to that in some way by giving him a basketball gimmick just because he played basketball at college. It made no sense, because what skills can a basketball player bring to the squared circle? What are you going to do? Take your opponent's head and dunk it through some backboard? That doesn't make any sense! Fortunately, the gimmick was only given a handful of airings on WCW's various B-shows before getting canned, but still, come on. Number 9, Oz. In 1991, before he was Diesel or part of the NWO or the Outsiders, Kevin Nash was put in a stupid green cape and an over-the-top silver beard and called Oz. It was dreadful. How Nash ever got past this to get the success he did is anyone's guess, and clearly WCW knew how bad this was because after a few wins he lost to Ron Simmons at the Great American Bash, and that was it for Oz, done and dusted. Some people do say it's because there was a copyright issue given this was going all in with the Wizard of Oz idea, but I like to think one day someone in WCW actually watched the TV show and freaked out about how sh** it all was. Believe me, it was sh**. Number 8, The Zodiac. Brutus Beefcake had so many gimmicks I think I lost track. It's like his version of a heroin addiction. He had gained enough notoriety that he did turn some heads when he joined WCW in 1994, but I assume all those heads turned back the other way when he arrived as the Zodiac. For this, Brutus painted his face black and white and started shouting yes, no, over and over again when he arrived in the ring. Yep, that was the gimmick. The hell is that? Honestly. It got worse because the name had come from a real-life serial killer. In a few weeks, this idea was dead and Beefcake was on to another disastrous persona. In short, his entire WCW run was a failure. Number 7, The Booty Man. And just in case you needed more proof of that, here it is. Beefcake is back with his 1995 Booty Man gimmick, which was all about a man obsessed with his own ass. How Brutus felt about this, I don't know, given he had headlined Starcade the previous year with best buddy Hulk Hogan, but what a fool from grace. Surprise, surprise, this didn't work and no one cared about it, because how could you? I know that in the modern day we have booty O's with a new day, so I guess you can make a case for it being ahead of its time, but that's nonsense to be honest. No one wanted to or does want to have some idiot running around focusing on their rear end. This is what ruins wrestling, I tell you. Number six, the Shockmaster. Forever now entrenched in wrestling lore by tripping over a wall and knocking his own helmet off on his debut, the Shockmaster, aka the former tugboat, would have been a joke even without all of this. For one, he was wearing a sparkly Stormtrooper helmet, and if that isn't an instant obstacle, I don't know what is. Well, that and the obstacle that Fred Ottman actually tripped over when he arrived. Thing is, this gimmick was so bad it's probably better it did happen this way. It would have fallen flat regardless, and at least here, it made its mark, even if that is an infamy. WCW thought they could salvage this with a tweaked version down the line, but it was too late. This was dead literally as soon as it got going. Number 5, The Yeti. WCW had 7 foot Ron Reese on their books, and after thinking long and hard about what to do with him, they dubbed him The Yeti, covered him head to toe in bandages, and threw him out there at the end of Halloween Havoc 95 to bear hug Hulk Hogan. What on earth? Somehow the company found room for a few more weeks of this as they tried to make the character look more messening, but wouldn't you know it, they failed. Because of course they failed. It was like your duvet had come to life and was stomping around. Also, this dumb costume restricted his movement. So this was just an absolute bust and thankfully killed off before long. And that really was the best thing they could have done. Well, kinda. The best thing they could have done was never have this happen to begin with. Number four, the fat chick thriller. This really is the lowest of the low, and what WCW was thinking, I'll never know. Just took the idea of taste and threw it in the bin where the company was going anyway. Existing for about a month in the mid-2000s, Mike Awesome was told he now loved overweight women and he was going to walk to the ring accompanied by such individuals each and every time he was to wrestle. Now that's bad enough, but Awesome had shown in his time during ECW that he had the capabilities to be a proper star and not some jabroni beating moron. This soon became a thing for the man as he was saddled with awful gimmick after awful gimmick. This really was bottom of the barrel stuff. What was the long-term plan? Clearly there wasn't one as it was dead so quickly after it was introduced, but it shouldn't have even got that far. What 
joke. Number three, that 70s guy. I just mentioned those terrible ideas that followed Mike Awesome after this, and here's one of the worst. Why associate with overweight ladies when he could think he was from the 1970s instead? This is why people hate wrestling, WCW, you idiots. For reasons we'll never truly understand, it didn't quite manage to catch on, and after a brief feud with Vampiro, he absolutely dropped his latest guys altogether. Because of course he did. The damage had already been done though and the fans had already made up their minds about Awesome in WCW. This was one of the last failings of Ted Turner's organization before it vanished. It really does give you a good idea of where things were. No one knew what the hell they were doing. Number two, Arachnaman. Brad Armstrong, who was a good worker and wrestler, got his ass kicked in 1991 when WCW decided he should wear a Lycra bodysuit and be called Arachnaman. So Spider-Man basically, but not because he has a different name and clothes. Marvel still wasn't happy about this, as you'd imagine. This is not how copyright works. And got in touch to tell WCW to stop doing this or else. They obliged and that was that. It was clear from the start the only reason was to try and hock as much merchandise as possible. But if you were some kid that wanted Arachnaman merchandise, well, you had problems of your own to deal with. Number one, the Candyman. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is worse than the Candyman gimmick. Once again falling into the lap of Brad Armstrong when he was in Atlanta, he was repackaged as the Candyman and off his career went down a cliff. The idea was he would walk to the ring carrying sweets and give them to young fans. And if that sounds horribly creepy, that's because it is horribly creepy. One day someone in the WCW production crew realized how awful a man in pants trying to win kids over looked and this was stopped before any real damage was done. You do have to ask though, if this made it to TV, what on earth was Pitts that didn't? It's a terrifying thought. Hey you! Yes, you, the wrestling fan! Have you got the January blues? Do all the wrestling fans mock you and kick you in the balls for not knowing stuff about AEW, WWE, NXT, delete as appropriate? Well, never fear, because What Culture Man is here. I said, What Culture Man is here. And he's here to tell you that if you head to shop.whatculture.com now, you can get your hands on all these great wrestling books, plus magazines, t-shirts, and board games. So kick off 2022 in style with Becoming All Elite by Michael Sidgwick, Development Hell by Michael Sidgwick, Shocking Wrestling Plans You Won't Believe Almost Happened, Shocking Wrestling Plans You Won't Believe Actually Happened, and 606 Wrestling Matches to See Before You Die. But hurry, there's only a few copies left, and when they're gone, they're gone. Although Michael Sidgwick's books are still available on Amazon. Thanks, what culture man? Uh, what's that? Uh-oh, two wrestling fans are arguing on social media about which of their favorite wrestlers are better and telling each other to touch grass. Ha ha ha, I hate wrestling Twitter, but I'll tell you what I don't hate, and that's the brilliant selection of books available at shop.whatculture.com. Get yours now. What Culture Man is a What Culture creation. DC Comics, please don't sue.